At daybreak, Katrina was roaring and visibility was next to nothing. Just after 9 o'clock in the morning, Captain Paul Helmers, an 18-year veteran, saw something he wasn't expecting. Water rising in the back parking lot. I would say about 10 minutes after we saw it rise, and I was pretty certain that the levee had to be breached. It was rising at uh, such a rate. You've probably never thought about ecosystems as one of the first lines of defense when it comes to human self-preservation. After all, here we are, tucked away in our fancy shelters, masters of our universes, even able to print food from a 3D printer. We couldn't possibly rely on something, say, like coastal marshes to offer protection. Unless you live somewhere near the coast and you don't realize that when a storm surges, it's these coastal marshes that absorb winds and waves, dialing down the damaging effects of a storm as it moves inland. It's like having your own renewable Army Corps of Engineers. Ecosystems also provide us with food, clean air, and fresh water. Try to live without one of those three resources and see how far your 3D printer will get you. So what if nature went capitalist rogue on us, branded us a bunch of bottom feeders, and told us the free ride was over? What if all the ecosystems could band together and demand a fee for their life-sustaining protective services? What would that price tag be? According to Carl Zimmer, writing for the New York Times, in 1997, a team of scientists assessed the worth of ecosystems worldwide and publish their findings in the journal Nature, in which they concluded that cost of services rendered would be $33 trillion, about $48.7 trillion today. We're talking about services like soaking up our dirty laundry in the form of greenhouse emissions. These kinds of services, it was determined, were twice as valuable as the gross national product of every country on Earth in 1997. But a new study by one of Nature Journal's 1997 authors, Robert Costanza, takes a deeper dive into the economics of ecosystems and comes up with a significantly higher price tag that ecosystems might bill us for to the tune of $142.7 trillion. Costanza and his colleagues combed through hundreds of new studies on ecosystems and their roles in sustaining and protecting the environment and its species, including us bipedal hominids. They also looked at 17 services in 16 different kinds of ecosystems like mangroves and tropical rainforests to better understand the sort of assist provided by nature on a daily basis. Natural structures like coral reefs provide some of the most expensive services at about $995,000 a year for each acre. In addition to their regular day job sustaining ocean life, they also weaken waves, helping to protect against soil erosion when those less powerful waves reach land, not to mention generating hundreds of billions of dollars a year from tourism, as well as recreational and commercial fishing. The problem is that this incredibly valuable service, covering less than 1% of the Earth's surface, is diminishing every year. For instance, from from 1997 to 2011, the world's reefs shrank from 240,000 acres to just 108,000 acres, thanks to pollution and human activity like dredging, coastal development, and overfishing. Now consider deforestation and other man-made changes to our environment, and you can see that in Earth's annual financial report, there's a devastating blow to our net worth. So if an image of polar bears scrambling over yet another chunk of ice melting into oblivion isn't enough of a rally cry, well, maybe reimagining that chunk of frozen water is a dense wedge of millions of dollars dissolving into a liquid will do the trick. So does reimagining the earth as just a collection of a bunch of dollar signs change your view of conservation? Let us know in the comments below.